the next section is about motion in the plane and using derivatives to finding derivatives of vector valued functions. So um, your goal today is to calculate derivatives of vector valued functions and I want to remind you about vectors in general. Vectors have magnitude and direction but they don't necessarily have position. If you have a vector that's a comma b it's parallel to the line segment that goes from 0, 0 to a comma b but it could be anywhere in the plane. The magnitude of a vector is its length so you can find the magnitude by finding by using Pythagorean theorem to find the length. A vector has a tail and a head. The head is towards a comma b and that tells you the direction of travel. So um, one way we can describe motion is with a position vector and the position vector is just a parametric function describing the position of our particle in the plane. So um, just to remind just a quick um, overview of motion in the plane. Um, the position is going to be kind of a parametric equation. It tells you your x coordinate and your y coordinate at a given time. That looks just like a parametric equation. The velocity is going to be a vector as well. It will tell you your um, velocity in your x direction as well as your y direction. You could have a particle that's moving backwards in the y direction and moving forwards in the x direction. It would be going um, to the right and down in that case and it's totally okay for a particle to be moving um, right and down at the same time. Um, so you can have a velocity vector that um, has different signs and different direction of travel and it and that's what velocity tells you is how fast and what direction you're traveling in. Speed is going to be the magnitude of the velocity vector. It will be the length of that velocity vector. So the way you find that is with Pythagorean theorem. Um, and speed is a scalar. It's not a vector. So remember, velocity tells you direction of travel, you know, right, left, up, down. And speed just tells you how fast you're going. So speed is going to combine your x and y direction and figure out, I mean, x and y velocity and figure out how fast your particle is traveling just as a number. Um, acceleration has um, vector properties. It is the second derivative with respect to time of both x and y um, components of your position vector. Um, so we're going to do some examples of motion in the plane. Um, we're going to do actually just this one example. So a particle moves in the xy plane so that at any given time t, the position of the particle, is given by x of t equals t cubed plus 4t squared and y of t is equal to t to the fourth minus t cubed. And we're, our job is to find the velocity vector at t equals 1. So the velocity vector is going to be the derivative with respect to time And so at 1, that would be 11, and y prime would be 1. So our velocity vector at t equals 1 would be 11, 1. Our particle is moving more quickly to the right than it is moving up. It's moving up and to the right more quickly to the right than it is moving up. Um, find the speed of the particle at t equals 1. Well, we have the velocity vector is um, 11, 1. So the speed would be the magnitude of that. So it would be 121 plus 1. So the speed would be the square root of 122. Um, I don't know exactly what number that is, but I could grab that on a calculator. It's going to be a little bit more than 11, which makes sense. The particle is mostly moving 11 at a rate of 11. I don't know, meters per second or whatever our units are, but it's also moving up a little bit. So it's going to have a little bit more speed than just 11. Um, a particle, and so this is the same particle, is the particle ever at rest? So in order to be at rest, it would have to be not moving in both the x and the y direction. So our um, velocity again, if I factor that, I get t times 3t plus 8 
and then our oops just first derivative of the y would be if I factor that I get 4t minus 3 and it looks like this is at rest in the x direction at t equals 0 and t equals negative 8 thirds and it's at rest in the y direction at t equals 0 and t equals 3 fourths so yes the particle is at rest at t equals 0 because both components of velocity are 0. Um, find the acceleration vector at t equals 2, so we need a second derivative for that. And then we're going to plug 2 into that, so x double prime of 2 would be 12 plus 8, which is 20, and y double prime of 2 would be 48 minus 12, which is 36. So our acceleration vector at t equals 2 would be 20 comma 36. Um, and just to emphasize, find the slope of the path of, that the particle is traveling at t equals 1 is different from finding the velocity vector of the particle. Um, the slope of the path is going to be dx dy dx and remember we find that by finding the derivative of y with respect to t over the derivative of x with respect to t and at 1 that would be 1 eleventh so the slope of the path is 1 over 11 at that point um, so that's an overview of particle motion in the plane using both parametric equations and tying that to vectors.